trust every word you say All my fears I'm laying down at your feet I will trust in your grace that cannot be earned Walk through the fire and not be burned All my doubts have lost their sound to your voice You are who you are The God of the Impossible Father, we thank you that we know in our hearts that you are the God of the impossible. Lord, as we gather in your presence today, we invite your Holy Spirit to fill this place. We invite your Holy Spirit to fill our hearts. Lord, we ask that your presence would be very strong in our midst today. Lord, we ask that you would be with each one that's gathered here this morning and with each one that's gathered online Lord, that there would be a real sense of unity and togetherness and fellowship in your house today. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would just bless from beginning to end all that's said and done in this place. And we'll be careful to give you the honor and the glory and the praise for all that you do in us 
and for all that you do through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together. Let's spend a few moments worshiping the Lord today. Rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon our God. You reign forever, our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like you. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the our God. Reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like you. God, the everlasting God, you do not faint, you won't grow weary, you're the defender of the weak, you comfort those in need, you lift us up on wings like are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those us up on wings like eagles. Praise your name. There's a song we've been singing called The Goodness of God. And as I look through the words and I've in my own my own personal perspective, I've kind of renamed it Moses' song because Moses realized just how faithful God was. And God has never stopped being faithful. Put your hand up if God is faithful to you. That's testimony right there that we serve a faithful God. And no matter what situations we go through, no matter what circumstances we may face, God is always good, all the time. He never changes. I 
I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Let's worship Him this morning all my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice, for you have led me through the fire in the darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life, all my life, you have been faithful. Yes, you have, Lord. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am me. I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down and surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful. Yes, you have, Lord. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am me. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Praise His name. Praise His name. Just speak His name across this room today. We worship Your name, O Lord. All my life you've been faithful. <clears throat> A couple of days ago, <clears throat> I heard on the news and I read on Facebook that someone who lived in Quebec for a number of years and played hockey for a number of years, passed away. His name was Guy Lafleur. I grew up watching him winning Stanley Cup after Stanley Cup in the 1970s. He retired from the Canadians and then went to play for a couple of other teams and he succumbed to lung cancer. But one of the things that was really well known about Guy Lafleur was his slap shot, the speed at which he skated, the flowing blonde hair as he would skate down the ice. But I remember being in the Montreal Forum 
when the fans, whenever he would touch the puck, they would say, gee, 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 gee. Almost in a sense that they were trying to worship him. And that's probably exactly what they were doing. And I thought to myself, you know, whenever we feel the presence of God in our lives, whenever we feel the presence of Jesus in our lives, we need to be speaking his name. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Because when we recognize his presence, when we recognize his hand upon our lives, it should spur something within us. It should stir our hearts. It should stir our spirits to the point where we're not worshiping a person and saying their name, but we're worshiping the Savior of the world. And all that he has done and all that he is doing and all that he is going to do. It should be like the very breath that we breathe. His name should continually be on our lips. And as we sing this next song, I just invite you to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you this morning. As you breathe in and out as you sing, just remember it's the Lord Jesus, it's God who has given you that breath. He is the very breath that we breathe. is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread This is my daily bread Your very word Spoken to me And I
just before you I'm lost without you I'm desperate for you And I'm lost without you all stand together again and can we just try that can we just say the name of Jesus over and over again speak it out loud not under your breath just speak his name invite his presence not just into this building but into your heart just speak his name today Jesus 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 we love you Jesus we need you Jesus we love you Jesus, we love you. We worship your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. Worship your name, O oh God. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, we call upon your name. Jesus, we call upon your name today. Lord, we live in such a difficult world right now, Lord. And Lord, the name of Jesus needs to be on our lips. Lord, we live through difficult circumstances right now, and the name of Jesus needs to be on our lips today, O oh God. It needs to be in our heart. It needs to be in our minds, O oh God. Holy Spirit, we need your presence in this place. Holy Spirit, we need your presence in our hearts and in our lives. Holy Spirit, we need your presence in our homes. We need your presence in our schools. We need your presence in our workplaces, O oh God. Jesus, we speak your name today because your name means life. You are the way, the truth, and the life. So, Lord, we speak your name knowing that your name has power, knowing that your name has authority. We worship your name, O oh God. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, we love you. Lord, just minister in our hearts today as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before you're seated, why don't you turn around. If you're comfortable shaking hands, shake hands with someone. If not, just give them a nice friendly wave. have a presentation that we'd like to do this morning. I'm going to invite the board members that are here. I believe Christine is doing Sunday school, but the rest of the other board members, if they would just come and stand on this side of the communion table. And it's been a number of weeks, months, actually a couple of years since many have been in, in church and Austin and Ruby are here this morning. And unfortunately, we're going to bid them farewell. They're moving out to Alberta to be with uh, closer to their family. And I'm going to invite Austin and Ruby, if they would come and stand right here with me for just a few moments at the front. We'd like to honor you. We'd like to bless you for a few moments and allow the congregation an opportunity just to see you one more time. <laughs> Praise God. From what I understand, you folks have been here with us in our church for 25 years. And before that, you were at uh, or, uh, Community Church in Orleans, the other side of Ottawa. So this area has been your home for the last few decades. And through that time, you've been through uh, some great times of blessing. You've also been through some, some difficult challenges. 
but God has been faithful to you. As we were singing that song, I was thinking about your lives and your family. God has been faithful, and he will continue to be faithful. And We're certainly going to miss you here, but we're glad that you're going to have the opportunity to be closer to your family out in Alberta, and I understand that they have a wonderful home all ready for you guys to move into. Um, all you got to do is get there. But we're going to miss you here, and we just want to acknowledge the fact that uh, in the last couple of decades with our church, you've been so involved with ministry, and, and uh, Austin, you've been so faithful at ushering for many, many years, and you've served on the board here. And together, you and Ruby, you were kind of the right-hand people for Pastor Earl and Cheryl for doing swap for so many years, working in the kitchen, coming in here to set up tables. And uh, the very tables that are in that storage room back there are uh, marked with a little plaque in memory of your daughter, Donna. And so um, part of you is going to remain here in the memories of each and every one of us and the work that you've done here and the influence that you have placed upon our lives. And we wanted to present you with uh, just a, a, mom, um, a token of our appreciation um, in this picture that we would like for you to take with you and place in your home in Alberta. Now just a little bit of background on this picture is that it's done by an artist by the name of William Saunders. Um, I don't know if it's any relation to you folks over there, but William Saunders was, um, he was a uh, Montreal, native to Montreal. He was an artist. He passed away in the 1940s. And Wanda and I are collectors of William Saunders' prints. And this we purchased when we moved here in 2013 to hang in our home. And when we discovered that you folks were going to be moving, the Lord just impressed upon my heart and said, that picture's to go with Austin and Ruby. Because it says on it, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And so it doesn't matter where your household is, whether it was in Orleans, or whether it was here, or whether it was in Sarnia, and I know you spent a lot of time there, or whether it's going to be in Alberta. We know that the Lord will always be the Lord of your household. And so we've got a little plaque to put on it so you can remember us by. And we would uh, just like you to take it with you and place it in a place in your home that you'll be able to, whenever you look at it, you'll be able to remember us as your congregational family for the last couple of decades. And Austin, I must say that there have been times when you have come into my office and... Um, You've noticed the picture of my grandfather who served in the police department for over 30 years. And if anyone was able to understand the life that my grandfather lived for so many years, it was you because you served so faithfully for the police for many, many years. And you shared some stories of your situations that you faced. And I've shared with you some things about my grandfather and um, there's just, I believe, been a real special time that we've shared together at times. And as a family, myself and Wanda and our boys, we're really going to miss the both of you. But we pray God's blessing upon you, that uh, God would direct you and keep you in good health. And we promise that we will continue to pray for this dear couple and your entire family. So in a moment, we're going to ask the board to lay hands on you and pray for you. But uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity just to share from your heart, if you would, Austin. Well, Pastor, of all the things that you've said that we've done since we've been here, we must be awfully old. <laughs> as, uh, as we were old when we got here, and that hasn't stopped. But uh, we're... This is a hard move, really. It's not by choice. It's of necessity that, that we go when the last of our family, our daughter-in-law and our son Kevin and his family moved out. We were the only ones left of the family in Ontario. And uh, he and our daughter Paula, who has been out in be there now for 15 years. 
they got together and decided that we were going to be moving out there whether we wanted to or not. <laughs> so we pondered what the not would be and we decided maybe it's best we go. So our last day is, uh, our full day, last day is Thursday. The movers are coming in and taking everything that we own. And, uh, but that's only material stuff. What I thank God mostly for is that Ruby and I are still together. Life has changed with us and that, and uh, we've, we have had our problems, haven't we all? You know, but God is our stay. He sustains us, he leads us, he guides us, and no matter how many leans on his shoulder, there's always room for one more. And we're hoping that we are the one more that still has to lean on his shoulder. And thank you very much, Pastor, to give to us something that means so much to you and your family with something. We never expect something like this because people don't usually give paintings away. But thank you very much. Words just fail me to really express our appreciation and thanks for, for what you're doing. And we are going to miss you people. We've, uh, when I used to get up here and sort of make a fool of myself, given the, uh, <laughs> doing the announcements and that, and uh, there was times I didn't know whether you were laughing with me or, f or against or, you know, or for me. But uh, maybe you were laughing at me, but that was okay too, because I laughed back at you. So thank you very much for everything. And thank you for inviting us in to your last service. It hasn't been easy for us to stay away, but circumstances has caused us to have to stay. And as you know, Ruby is not all that well. And uh, we're not getting any younger, as neither are you. But uh, thank you very much. And uh, that's all I have to say. I was supposed to say something, so my last words is something. Let's all stand together. And if I can ask you just to step out a little bit and ask the board just to encircle you, we're going to pray for you today. Hallelujah. Let's all extend our hand out to Austin and Ruby today. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the family of God. That no matter where we are in our journey of life, that we know that you create a unity and a sense of togetherness and fellowship amongst us. And Lord, as difficult as it is to see loved ones travel and be away from our presence, Lord, we are glad today that you have your hand upon Austin and Ruby we are glad today that you have your hand upon the very plans that you have for their lives in the days ahead. We are thankful that they are going to be close to their family so that they can have a sense of togetherness and fellowship. Lord, we're thankful that you have already prepared the place for them to be. And Lord, we just ask that you would surround them with your presence in the next few days and weeks. Lord, that the transition would be as smooth as possible. Lord, we pray for good health upon their lives. Lord, we pray for your healing hand to be upon them this very day. Lord, as a congregation, we ask that you would remind us to pray for them, to reach out to them, whether it be through phone calls or whether it be connecting on Facebook. Lord, we just ask, Lord, that there would still be that sense of unity with us and them, knowing that we love them very much. We thank you for the, the decades of ministry and service that they have both been a part of, both here and in uh, Orleans and in Sarnia and other places, Lord, that they have lived. Lord, we're so grateful that you have placed them in our lives for such a time as this. And Lord Jesus, we just ask your blessing upon them as they go to their new home in just a few days. We pray all these things in your precious and holy name. And everyone said, 
Amen and amen. We're going to go through a few announcements before we look to the Word of God and make sure you get a chance to shake Austin and Ruby's hand in the lobby before you leave today. The announcements that we want to look at starting this week on Monday, tomorrow we have TLC, which is our women's group, and men's darts. Both start at 6.30 and we invite you to attend. Uh, Tuesday at 7 o'clock is our Bible study, and that starts at 7 o'clock right over in this section, and if you have not joined us, we would invite you to come and join us on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Wednesday is Power Hour. It's the last one for our uh, f- this season, for this year, before we start up again in the fall, and that is for ages 5 to 11 and 6.30 on Wednesday evening. We um, are looking, I mentioned this a couple of, uh, last couple of weeks, but we're looking forward to camp season because the last couple of years our camps have not been able to function, at least not to the capacity or the ability that they have. And so camps are going to be available again this year, both OVPC and of course Lakeshore for those who live down in that area of the province. And we initiated a Send a Kid to Camp Fund a number of years ago. We started it in 2020 and then the pandemic hit and everything shut down. And so there is already some money there. But if you would like to send a kid to camp and you'd like to make a few dollars of donation, you can do that through your envelopes and uh, that will help to send a few kids to our camp up here at OVPC. There is a new directory that we are planning in the days ahead. You may have seen the billboard out in the lobby and I believe Velma has already started the process of collecting names. We need your names, your addresses, your phone number and your email address. We send those to the company and they will contact you with uh, an appointment date. They're going to be here on three days, May the 31st, June the 1st, and June the 3rd. And the reason why there's a gap in there is because the election day uh, for the Ontario election is on June the 2nd, so we need the building for the election. But on the Tuesday and Wednesday, the photographer is going to be here to take pictures. Thursday is the election, and then Friday the photographer, photographer will be back again. There is no cost at all to any of you but by coming and getting your picture taken to put it in the directory, uh, then you will get a copy of the directory so you'll have the phone numbers and the information of everybody in the congregation to help us to be able to connect and communicate better. Now with those pictures that are being taken, if you would like to purchase a package, then there will be an opportunity and that will be between you and the photographer and it will have nothing to do with the church. So um, there'll be more information coming out on that. But before you leave today, um, Caitlin is going to be in the lobby and she'll be taking the remainder of your names um, if you haven't yet already given them to Velma. So we need your name and your address, your phone number and your email address and then the company will be contacting you to make an appointment on one of those three days. I don't know if you noticed out in the lobby if it's still there, but there's a Um, kind of a picture about that big with a whole bunch of small pictures in it from 2002 or 2003 and that was the one of the older directories and if you look back on it it, it's like looking back in time but we're going to be getting one of those as well that will have all of the new faces and all of our, our names and all of our pictures on there so we look forward to that if you have any questions you can ask me but make sure to sign up with Caitlin after the service today we're also looking at teen challenge donations um, we had our teen challenge uh, chapter here a few times over the last couple of months and we'd like to initiate an opportunity for you to bring in items um, bathroom items, toiletry items, personal items and we don't yet have a list from Steve Prendergast but the type of items that we're looking at is deodorant, toothpaste, toothbrushes, no soap because they already have a lot of soap and I mentioned that already but uh, body wash, shampoo, those kind of things. If you're stopping by a grocery store or a dollar store and you want to pick up a few of those items we are going to have a bin in the lobby in the next couple of weeks once we get that list and we'll begin to fill that 
to minister to Teen Challenge. If you'd like to donate to the church, we have our website, and we thank you for your faithfulness in giving to God's house for those of you who bring your envelopes. But by going to the donate section of the website, you can donate in a couple of ways by hitting the yellow button, which is PayPal, put in the dollar value of your donation or tithe, and then you fill in the personal information. And when you submit that, the money flows from your credit card directly into the general fund. Now, if you'd like to designate to a specific ministry, then you go to CPC Payments, and you send an email to our administrator, Patty Peaver, and let her know where your donation would like to go. And then if you'd like to use the Tithely method, which more people are using now, then you hit that button. Same thing, put in the dollar value of your donation, the uh, personal information, and uh, there's a way to designate funds directly with the scroll down page on the right. And if you'd like to cover the administration fee, there's the green button at the bottom. We are continuing to give to Ukraine as well, and there's a way that you can do that through the, the, the main page that when you hit the Ukraine section where it says donate, it takes you directly to Erdo, which is the POC um, humanitarian relief organization with, within the POC. And when you make your donation there, same thing, you put the amount in that you'd like to donate, and then it will ask for your personal information, and it will go directly from your credit card or bank account directly to head office, which is where you will also be receded. So many of you have already mentioned that you've done it that way, and some of you have given through your envelopes here. And so we thank you for your faithfulness in giving to all of these various ministries. I'll invite you to turn with me in your Bibles. to the book of Isaiah, chapter 6. And while you're doing that, I'll just get this microphone fixed up. Isaiah chapter 6, and we're going to start reading at verse number 1. And it begins by saying this. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. And I also heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, go and tell this people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed. Then I said, Lord, how long? 
And he answered, Until the cities are laid waste and without inhabitant, the houses are without a man, the land is utterly desolate. And so, Lord, we ask your blessing upon your word today. Lord, that you would teach us something that we need to know so that we can become more like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you're here today and you're younger, or if you're here today and you're in good health, and we understand that good health isn't only for the young because disease and sickness is no respecter of persons. But as we age, or when we develop some type of condition, we might need a prescription. We might need a type of medication that will help us. And sometimes it's one of those prescriptions that you take for 10 days, you know, the kind where if you, if you have a throat infection or if you have a sinus infection or, or, or some type of a, a virus that a prescription can bring healing to, you go to the doctor and they'll give you a prescription and it usually lasts for 10 days. But then for others, sometimes a condition becomes chronic or you have some type of deficiency and you might need what's called a maintenance drug, which you might take for a longer period of time or you might even take that for the rest of your life. And if you take any type of medication, whether it's short-term or whether it's long-term, when you go to the pharmacy, you might have a discussion with the pharmacist. It might be a time when they'll say, well, you need to have a talk with the pharmacist. And so the pharmacist will come out and the pharmacist will tell you uh, what the medication is for, the pharmacist will tell you how to take the medication, and the pharmacist will tell you what some of the side effects might be in the medication that you have been prescribed. See, because some medications can't be taken with other medications. And so if you're taking one already, the doctor might say, or the pharmacist might say, well, these don't go together, or there's certain conditions that you need to take them with, and some might cause drowsiness, and so there might be a warning on it that you're not supposed to drive, you're not supposed to operate any type of heavy machinery while you're taking this medication. And others have side effects. And have you ever noticed that at times, sometimes the side effects are worse than the actual condition that you have? You look at some of those, uh, if you ever watch American television and they'll come on with these medications that they're trying to sell you, um, and they'll say, okay, here's the list of side effects. And it's like, wow, who would take that when you're taking the medication and the side effects are more concerning than the actual condition or maybe, you know, they're, they're equally as difficult. Some have side effects and the medication that I take for my thyroid condition, at times it causes congestion in my lungs and in my throat. And I, I feel it when I'm singing, I feel it when I'm speaking, there's that, that raspiness there that I feel that, that occurs, and there are times when it makes me feel very tired, it makes me very thirsty, and so there are sometimes there are side effects to a medication that you might be taking. And all of these di directions and warnings, they're given so that the medication will work properly, so that you will know exactly what the purpose is. And so that it will work so that you will reach the desired outcome with hopefully a limited amount of discomfort and a limited amount of side effects, which is why a person takes medication to follow orders from a trusted physician to experience healing or improved health. And that's why I've entitled this message today, Take Your Medicine. Because I believe that there are steps that need to be taken. I believe that there are directions that need to be followed. And I believe that we need to be aware of the side effects in order to receive a fresh move of God's Holy Spirit in our lives. Isaiah's experience in Isaiah chapter 6 provides us with some direction 
as to what the great physician's prescription is for his people. And we're going to look at a couple of the steps today. We're going to look at a couple of points today and a a few more next Sunday. So there's two parts to this message. But here are what the five points are that we're going to be looking at. Number one, take your medicine. So that's going to be point one in just a moment. Number two, invite a breathtaking encounter with God to happen. Invite a breathtaking encounter with God to happen. Number three, four, and five, we'll look at next Sunday. Practice real confession. You might think, well, what's the difference? Real or non-real? There is a difference. Number four, submit to the cleansing power of God. And number five, commit ourselves. Commit yourself no matter what the cost. And so the first step in fulfilling the desired outcome of any prescription is that we must be willing to do what the doctor says. We must be willing to take the medicine that is prescribed. And there are many people, and for whatever reason, and I'm not making a judgmental statement here, it's just people's personal preference. Many people are unwilling to take medication for their physical bodies, or they're very hesitant, to say the least. Or some people just ignore the directions altogether. You see on those bottles that you get from the pharmacy, there's directions. Take in the morning, take in the evening, take with a meal, take with take on an empty stomach, and, and some people just avoid the directions altogether and just take them whenever they want, or they don't take them whenever they want. And the problem with that is that we, I've even heard people say, oh, the doctor doesn't know anything, I'm just going to do it my way. Maybe you've heard people say that before. Or people may deviate from the prescription direction And they might take it sporadically when it says take every day and they take it every second day. Or it says take it every day and they take twice in a day because they feel they want to manage their own condition with the medication that they have. Well, when I was a kid, I used to wear prescription shoes. And I looked all over the internet for the way that these shoes looked. Because I don't know if it was because of the time. It was in the back in the mid 70s. These actually look like women's shoes, but they're the closest to what I was able to find. But back in the mid 70s, you couldn't, at least at the place that I went to, you couldn't get running shoes that were orthotic. You couldn't get inserts that you could just put into any shoe like I think that you can do now. I actually had to buy the shoe. I was fitted for shoes. And they looked like this. So it, it was like I had to wear heavy, rigid, hard shoes all the time. And as I was growing in the mid to late 70s when I wore these, the doctor told my parents that it was very important that I wear these shoes all the time. So I shouldn't walk around the house in bare feet. I I shouldn't wear any other type of shoe, even for gym class or for playing sports. The doctor said he has to wear them all the time because he has flat feet. And if he doesn't wear them, then what's going to happen over time as he grows is he's going to become knock-kneed and his knees are going to move in and it's going to be hard for him to walk. It's going to be hard for him to run. It's going to be hard for him or at least very painful to do anything of a physical nature. And I'll tell you that those shoes were the most uncomfortable thing that you could ever put on your feet. They had nothing soft in them at all. I think they were made out of concrete, literally. That, that's how hard they were. And I remember wearing them. And you want to talk about side effects to a prescription? I remember wearing them playing baseball. They had no tread on the bottom at all. They were like church shoes. They were flat on the bottom. And you try to run in grass with those kind of shoes on. It was impossible. You try to run in a gym class on a slippery floor. Talk about side effects. My side effects is that I would run and I would fall and I would run and I would fall and I would run and I would fall and the whole time my feet were aching. Side effects. I felt stupid 
because all the other children were laughing. Look at his shoes. How do you expect to play in that? Do you remember that awful system? And I don't know if they still use it today, but that awful system of choosing teams, line up everybody against the wall, pick two captains who were always the most popular kids. I pick Johnny. Okay, your turn. Okay, I pick, and I pick, and I pick. And there's Peter standing there with his brown prescription shoes Always the last one to get picked. You want to talk about side effects? Gym class, baseball, all of that stuff. My parents made me wear them. No deviations, no exceptions. And today, I am thankful for those very few years of hard, sore feet. Because I have absolutely no problem with my feet today. No pain. Throughout my life, I've been able to play hockey. I've been able to referee hockey. I've been able to play golf, all kinds of sports. And not just play them, but excel at them. And if you've been in my office, you see all the trophies and things that I've won by participating in those sports, and not just participating, by do, but by doing them well. And I would never have been able to do any of that without those few years of following a prescription as difficult as it was. And if I had not followed the doctor's directions, if I had convinced my parents to not let me wear them, Many of the things that I've enjoyed throughout my lifetime and continue to enjoy today would have either been impossible or extremely painful. When my grandfather had his heart valve replaced in 1981, it was a valve that apparently it was, uh, his valve was defective from when he was born, but just he never realized it. And so... In 1981, when my grandmother was in the hospital and and her heart stopped as a result of her cancer surgery, my grandfather was sitting in the hallway, and when they came out and said, your wife's heart stopped, but we got it going again, he had a heart attack right there in the hallway. And so he's now in a different part of the hospital, and they discovered that he needed a heart valve, and so they put a heart valve in. It was interesting, when I used to live at my grandparents' place, when he'd sleep a certain way, you could hear, tick because it was the metal valve of the door opening and closing. But they told him that he had to be very careful. The valve itself was guaranteed for 150 years, (laughs) but there were some precautions that he had to take. And one of them was a medication, was a blood thinner that they, he said he had, they had to, he had to take it for the rest of his life because they didn't want the valve to get all gummed up or to have deposits build up on it. So the blood thinner would keep the blood flowing in his heart in a smooth way. And so as a result, he couldn't use this anymore. Do people still use these razors? Anybody here use a straight razor? I used to be amazed when I'd watch him and he'd put on the shaving cream and he'd take this razor that was sharp as anything and he'd, he'd start shaving and I'd watch him and, and sometimes he would cut himself because they're extreme. It's not like a safety razor or an electric razor. He had to use an electric razor for the rest of his life but this straight razor he couldn't use anymore. He used to cut himself at times and the doctor said, you can actually bleed to death with this blood thinner. And so you have to go back to using a different style of razor. He couldn't use that anymore and went to an electric razor. And so following instructions carefully is very important. But there are still those who are unwilling to do it. And unfortunately, they suffer the consequences as a result. In like manner, there are many people who are unwilling to take the medicine that the Lord prescribes for them. Unbelievers and believers alike choose to ignore God's commands 
They choose to ignore God's word. They choose to deviate from what God has commanded and kind of try to do it their own way. They deviate from what God has called humanity to be and do as his creation. And because of a lack of obedience to the great physician, there are consequences that can be suffered by mankind. And if you remember the video that we watched on Good Friday called I Love Barabbas, when it told the story of Jesus taking the place of Barabbas, a a convicted murderer, When we watched that video, it portrayed the message that there are some people that think that they can find their own way out of sinfulness apart from God, that they can adjust and they can manage their own lives without looking to Jesus, the great physician. They think that continuing to go through the routines of life and using their own wisdom, their own judgment, their own discernment to solve problems and conquer addictions and conflict, they believe that that is the answer and that they don't need to look to God. And so they set him aside thinking that he doesn't know what he's talking about. But in the same way that someone can do severe harm, or even die from taking medication prescriptions in a wrong way or or by not taking them at all. I believe, I know, because the Word of God says it, that there are those who are dying spiritually today. There are those who have come to such a backslidden state in their faith that they will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. They will not inherit eternal life simply because they are ignoring the directions that the great physician has given to them. And I believe that when it comes to having a genuine move of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we must be willing to follow the directions of the great physician to the letter we must be willing to follow his prescription properly. And the prescription involves several things, as we've already talked about. It involves taking our medicine. Well, what does that mean? It means going to church regularly. It means working together for the kingdom with a family of believers in fellowship and unity together. It means reading God's word. And not just reading the words or a couple of verses every once in a while. It means reading it and it means studying it and it means applying it to our lives. Those are the things that God wants us to do as part of his prescription to learn more about what it means to be more like him. And it means spending time in prayer, communicating with the great physician. Over the last couple of years, and you've probably been a part of doing this, if you've ever had doctor's appointments, we're not going to see them in person anymore. We're seeing them through Zoom sometimes, or we're talking to them on the phone. That's not as good as seeing the person in person, the doctor, but at least communication is occurring. And unless we communicate with the great physician, unless we communicate in prayer with him, we will have a hard time understanding what it is that he is prescribing for us. We need to follow his directions by taking the medicine that he prescribes. And as we do that, I believe it will pave the way for greater things that God wants to do in our lives. So take your medicine from God because he's prescribing it for us. The next step is that we need to invite a breathtaking encounter with God. We need to invite God to demonstrate something to us. Kind of like what is described in the first several verses of our text. 
It tells of how Isaiah encountered the Lord in a very unexpected way during an intense personal crisis that he was going through. And isn't it interesting, I don't know if you find this, but I've discovered and I've had people share with me similar experiences. That it's interesting that God usually speaks in the most powerful ways when we're going through the deepest of turmoil. You ever find that? Going through the most difficult situations? Those are the times that we tend to draw closest to God and we tend to hear in a significant way from Him. Maybe it's because those are the times when we are really and truly looking for ways to reach out to Him. But you know, reaching out to God doesn't only have to be during personal crises that are going on in our lives. We can reach out to Him and we can invite Him to reveal Himself to us at any time. And by His Spirit, He will speak into our lives and speak into our hearts. God appeared to Isaiah in a vision, seated on a throne, and it says he was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. So you think of the train on the back of a wedding dress, and sometimes these, these huge long ones, and what comes to mind is, is Lady Diana and Prince Charles, and, and that huge long train of a dress. Well, multiply that by several hundred thousands as the vision that was seen involved God appearing high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. It also said that he saw angels flying to and fro, back and forth, around the throne of God, and they were attending to God in various ways. And as they went about their work, as they went about their tasks, Scripture tells us that they worshipped Him, crying out to one another and to God, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. Think about what it would have been like in that moment to experience that tremendous encounter with God. And the scripture tells us that the voice of just one of these angels was so loud and powerful that the posts of the door were shaken. Just the voice. Powerful voice. And as they were worshiping, they were reminding Isaiah through his vision that God is holy. They were reminding him through this vision that God's presence is everywhere. And because God is everywhere by His presence, by His Spirit, I believe that we too can have a vision, we too can have an encounter with God that will change us. I believe that we can have an encounter with God that will transform us. I believe that we can have an encounter with God that will encourage us and cause us to press us into service for him. But it's not going to happen by just living a routine life. We have to press into God. We have to press in to his presence. We have to invite him to demonstrate to us a breathtaking encounter that you will never forget. And this encounter affected Isaiah much like it would anybody who wanted a deeper relationship with their Savior. Because it reminded Isaiah, it reminded him that God is everywhere. We need to understand too that God is everywhere. Sometimes we believe that we should only behave and speak in certain ways when we feel accountable by other people being present. The fact of the matter is that we are not accountable to people, although that is a good thing to have, but we are accountable to God, and He sees, and He hears, and He knows every single thing that goes on in our lives because He is everywhere. And so it changed how Isaiah acted. It changed how Isaiah spoke. It changed how he related to life because he knew that God was always watching. 
this encounter with God's presence. This amazing encounter changed his life. But it didn't only change his life, it altered the direction of where he was going. And you know, it's not hard for us to be able to say that there are a lot of people in our society who need to change the direction of their lives. We can think of people in our lives, people that we see on the news, people we see, and we see their behaviors, we, we, we see their, the words that they use, and we see the motives behind it, and we think to ourselves, God really needs to get a hold of them. They really need to change the direction of where they are going. And so it's not hard for us to say that, but a lot of people in our society today. There are things that are happening. There are things that are occurring in our culture today that just a few years ago we could never have imagined that they would be taking place. Sometimes you just look at the news or you read the newspaper, or you look online and you just shake your head and say, what are they thinking? Why are they doing that? Things that we never would have imagined could happen during our lifetime. And you know, I'll say this, that I believe that our culture is getting eerily close to the behaviors of Sodom and Gomorrah today. And other places in God's Word where He poured out His judgment. We're getting eerily close. Things are seeming eerily familiar about some things that are occurring in our culture. Regard for God's creation, regard for the very essence of human life itself is being cast aside. And I can't help but think that there are times when God is weeping over His creation today. And so it's easy for us to look at the world and say, well, they need to change their ways. But you know, God, uh, Isaiah was a God-fearing man. He wasn't a worldly person. He wasn't the type of person that you would look and say, oh man, Isaiah, you really have to change your ways. Because he was a faithful servant of God already. He had faith in God. But there came a time when he needed an encounter with God that would alter the direction of his life. And we know that the Bible says that in the last days there will be a great falling away of people with faith. And I can't help but think that we need today a fresh outpouring of His Holy Spirit in our lives. I can't help but think today that we need a breathtaking encounter with God that will steer us back or steer us onto the track or the path that He has called us to. And here's the thing, I can't make it happen for you, and you can't make it happen for me. It needs to be something that you seek God for and desire and invite God to do in your life. I believe that we need to follow the great physician's instructions. I believe that we need to take our medicine. I believe that we need to pray for an encounter of the Holy Spirit like we have never had in our lives before. And just going to church won't do it, but it's a good start. I believe that we need to seek to enter into God's presence. I believe that we need to seek to allow ourselves to be changed, to be transformed by His power, and change never comes easy. Especially the older we get and the more experience we have with how we are and the more comfortable we have, we, we are and, and familiar we are with, with our, our ways and our routines, it becomes more difficult to allow God to come in and make those transforming changes. I'm going to invite the worship team to come and join me on the platform. And next week, we're going to look at a couple of other things that we need to do. 
But today I feel that we need to draw close to God. And in a few moments, we're going to sing that song, Breathe Again. I'm going to invite us just to come and spend a few moments around this altar. And I'd like for us to begin to pray and invite God to show us as individuals and us as a fellowship church to display a breathtaking encounter with His Holy Spirit. It's something that we need, and it's something that we need to desire. And at the end of the service today, I've chosen a video that is called First Love. And it's based on the Scripture in Revelation where Jesus speaks to the church in Ephesus and says, you have lost your first love. You have departed from the things from where you started And Jesus says to them, remember from where you have fallen and go back and do the first things. (coughs) I believe God is calling His church to do that. Because I believe the enemy is hard at work in the lives of people. I believe the enemy is hard at work in the lives of believers. And I say this to everyone who either accepts Christ for the first time or they decide that they're going to renew their faith and strengthen their journey of faith. And I'll say to them, Here's the side effect. You now have a target on your back and the enemy has you in his sights. And he's going to attack and he's going to attack and he's going to attack and you need to be prepared for it. And in the words of the song that we're going to hear at the end, there's a line that says, I've seen far too many friends walk away and not come back. And I can think of people that I grew up with People that saw me in those shoes. (laughs) Who went to church with me and they had a faith that was strong. And I've seen far too many friends get tricked by the enemy and walk away from their faith and not look back. And today they're living in the world. And I guarantee as I look around this room today that you know someone either in your family or a close friend who at one time they knew the Lord and they have walked away and they're not coming back. Folks, that's the work of the enemy. And you know what will change that? A breathtaking encounter with the living God in their minds and in their hearts. There's another line in the song, and you'll hear it later. It says, the fire won't mean a thing if it ends right here with me. The fire of the Holy Spirit in our lives is great, and it helps us to serve Him and to love Him. But if it ends with our lives, when our bodies get put in the grave, and we've had no effect on the people around us, If the fire ends with me, the fire won't mean a thing if it ends right here with me. Folks, we need to have that renewed vision to reach the lost. So that the fire and the faith that we have in our lives is passed on to our children and to our grandchildren and to our friends and our family members. Would you bow your heads with me? Hallelujah. with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. If you're here today and you would say, Pastor, I need and I want to have a deep encounter with God. If that's your heart, would you put your hand up? Hallelujah. Once you put it up, you can put it down again. A deep encounter with God, Lord. That's the desire of those who have raised their hands today and perhaps there are those that have been watching from home who have the same feeling in their heart. That they don't want to become a statistic of falling away. That they don't want to become a statistic of of once having served you. because the enemy is working so hard to make that happen in so many people's lives. 
Lord, the fire won't mean a thing if it ends with us. There needs to be a church here in 10 years, in 20 years, in 30 years, in 50 years, for as long as you will tarry. So Lord, help us to have a desire to pass that fire of the Holy Spirit from us into the lives of those around us. Lord, we need you today more than ever before. We live in a world that is full of turmoil, but Lord, you have a prescription for healing. And it's through your Son, Jesus Christ. So Lord, help us today to draw close to him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we begin to sing this song, I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet. And if you raised your hand, or even if you didn't, but you want to draw close to Jesus Christ today, if you want to invite him to demonstrate to you a powerful encounter with the living God, then let it start here this morning at this very altar. I'll invite you to come as we sing on the very first word, this is the air I breathe. is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living my daily bread this is my daily bread your very This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my day. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me, and I, I'm desperate for. for you. Yes, we are, Lord. We're desperate for your presence. I'm lost without you. Yes, 
Lord. I'm desperate for you. And I'm lost without you. Praise your name. Praise his name. Just speak his name. Speak the name of Jesus right across this altar, right across this room today. Jesus, we need you. Jesus, we need you. Jesus, we praise the wonderful name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We shout your name. We're desperate Jesus. for you, oh God. We're, so desperate. We're desperate for a deep encounter with the living God in our lives. Hallelujah. 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 We worship your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, you see the ones that are gathered here at this altar today. You see the ones that are gathered at home. And Lord, we're reaching out to you. Lord, this is our act of worship. This is our act of reaching out, Lord, asking you, pleading with you, being desperate for a significant encounter, a deep encounter with God just like Isaiah had. Lord, we want to see you. We want to see your power manifested in our lives. We want to see your power manifested in our church. We want to see your power manifested in our community, O oh God. There are many, many dying and lost souls in the county around us. And Lord, you have placed us here as a lighthouse unto this area for such a time as this. And so Lord, use us. Alter the direction of our lives, Lord, and make us even to, even to greater vessels that you would desire to use for the extension of your kingdom, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We reach out to you, O oh God. And I I'm desperate for you. Just tell him. And I, I'm lost without you. And I. for you and I I'm so lost without you and I'm desperate for you I'm lost without you. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Sing that again. This is. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Worship you, O God. Lord, I pray over each one that's gathered here today. Minister to them in a powerful way today. We are all your children. Lord, we desire to follow the great physician. Lord, prescribe for us what we need. Stir us to take our medicine. And Lord, may we invite you to do something powerful and significant in our lives. We pray this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen.
You may be seated. I invite you just to watch the words of this video.